is 12.38 at night time. Well, actually morning time. 12.38 in the morning time. And, you know, I just finished uploading the introduction. Now, I'm going to record Inspector Control. Which is all good because, you know, everything's all quiet. Block's not loud. There's no reggaeton or, like, gangster music in the background. So, boom. You guys can understand whatever I'm saying. Nice and clear. And to fix my posture, fix my posture. So, last time I saw all that dirt. Alright, Infection Control. Infection Control is one of those big things that you really need to know. That's one thing that the NCLEC will definitely test you. And one thing that you need to know is hand washing is key. You can't go wrong with hand washing. Hand washing is key. Infection Control, hand washing, hand washing. Cold, hand washing. Like regular you know, flu season. Flu season comes in like the, when everyone gets in the cold, flu's all over the place. Number one thing that they emphasize is hand washing. That, that's key. I'll go into detail with the concept of hand washing because it is key, it is important. But what we're going to do first is process of infection process of infection legit has like parts to it reservoir the agent transmission port of entry the holes for the exit and that my friend is basically the whole process of infection that's how it moves that's how it works that's the whole cycling ish when it comes down to reservoir just know that reservoir is basically a person place or thing it's basically a person like a person who has herpes you know that that's one person it's a reservoir because the virus is there they have it already and boom a person who has hiv a person who has like chicken pox they're a reservoir that's a person it could be a place a place can be like let's say a forest a forest can be a place because sometimes they have ticks related to rickettsia and you get rickettsia from vectors and that's a place or it could be a thing let's say when a person sneezes sneezes don't wash their hands or sneeze on their hands horribly and like open the doorknob and you get sick off it that's that's no bueno so that's no good so that that's considered as a reservoir now when it comes down to th this part is a little bit more complicated this part is basically the agent the agent the pathogens like the agent of a pathogen the agent of the infection basically there's a whole bunch of different kinds there's two that you really need to put in consideration that you really need to know bacteria and virus know that bacteria is a single cell and the way they're categorized is basically on shapes and when they test them out on the gram stain there there's different colors so that's how they basically categorize them or identify them or whatever then from there know that bacteria is they can get killed with antibiotics as for viruses viruses is smaller single cell it reproduces in a host but the, the important NCLEX concept is you cannot give antibiotics to a virus a virus antibiotics don't mix it, it all makes sense so one of the NCLEX question could come out and it'll be like let's say the patient asks if for antibiotics you're gonna educate them nah my G it's not gonna work out because that's not a bacteria know what I mean no that and also know what's a bacteria and what is a virus a virus can be a hiv you can't give antibiotics to a person who has hiv herpes can't it's not gonna work aside from that also know that very most common bacteria is h laura e coli the biggie e coli is a biggie h pylori is a biggie and stuff like that and those two things you just need to just put that in your head that bacteria you know they can get killed off at antibiotic for viruses this is no veno when bacteria too is when when a person has bacteria and stuff just know that they're gonna give them a broad a general ish aside from the general once when they start you off with a general they're gonna take a cns a cns is cold transitivity basically they take a sample they put it in a dish and they grow it out into a nice little bacteria community and they take antibiotics and put it in those little places and they figure out which one's killing out first and that's how they specify which antibiotic works best but again a virus no it's not gonna do nothing antiviral but no no antibiotics so a patient who comes out no and has a influenza ask for an antibiotic you're gonna be like nah I'm like nah bro that, that's not gonna work out oh. aside from those two biggies you should know the other stuff like rickettsia rickettsia is related to vectors rickettsia is related to like lyme disease rickettsia is related to lyme disease as in like ticks or whatever rickettsia it could rocky mountain spotted fever or something like that i hope i i, I said it right that that's one thing that is more common to rickettsia in the other hand helmets is basically worms think of worms think of worms protosa protosa is a single cell ish that's more related to like decaying decaying stuff you eat it and it's already decaying know that when it comes down to helmets though helmets uh, another thing that you need to know is helmets helmets is basically like worms helmets is common with like eating raw meat raw animal that's like not cooked well pork 
No, though, make sure you cook your pork correctly. Don't get it medium rare. You have to get that ish cooked because I'm not gonna get into the whole topic with pork, but I'm just letting you know. Eat your food. Make sure it's fresh. If it's fresh, make sure it's cooked and it's not just there because salmon is more common when you're eating stuff that's like infested with larvae, which is like no baby worms. Don't want that ish. Facts. Aside from that, too, there's fungi. Fungi is like yeast infection stuff. Just know that yeast infection. Know that yeast infections. A girl, a girl likes to douche because she's like, yo, I like to smell nice and pretty, so I like to douche my ish. I don't know if you know what douche is, but if you don't know what a douche is, the girls should know what a douche is. But for guys, douche is basically when they clean up their vajaja and stuff. Now the thing is, when they're doing that, it's messing up their normal flora, and when there's an imbalance of normal flora, there's going to be an outbreak, and that outbreak is a no bueno. That, that's no good, and that's how basically things go super duper wrong. It's the same thing with like um C diff. C diff is like that too. When a person take antibiotics a lot, a lot, they're at risk for C diff because their normal flora is out of whack. Normal flora is a good bacteria. That's one thing that keeps things balanced. Like you know, like thrush. When when you have thrush and like you're mouthing off, there's a imbalance of normal flora and there's an overproduction of normal flora or whatever. Another thing is protozoa, protoza or whatever. It's a single cell parasitic. That's more related to like like decaying stuff. It's fecal oral hand washing. But when it comes down to this, hand washing is key. But with the Asian, way back in the day, way back in the day, this is actually a big thing. It hit the news. It's called prawns. Prawns is a prawns protein that messes you up and like you get neuro problem, brain problem, aka mad cow disease issue. So that's what prawns is. So if you have a question, an NCLEX question related to that will commonly be like, what's one thing that's related to prawns? You could be like, oh, mad cow disease, bro. It's a prawns protein that messes you up. Like these type of things you just need to just just know you just need to know that the, the part fundamentals a little bit more like memorizing type of ish it, it's really this section is all about memorizing really like know this know that know this know that and a little bit other stuff but just know that know that a bacteria is a single cell it could get killed off with an antibiotic a virus a virus is like uh it's smaller than the bacteria and thing is it could reproduce in the body and an antibiotic will not work for it you're gonna have to give it antiviral but you don't really want to abuse antiviral you don't want to abuse medication because that's one reason why we have like things like MRSA MRSA is like a resistant stuff and whatever because people abuse antibiotics and these things it, it just takes over just know that when when it comes down to these any treatment for those things you, you need to tell them be like yo if you're gonna start off a medication that's related to fungi or if that's related to like bacteria or whatever you have to finish it from the beginning to the end even if you're not even if you're feeling good even if you feel like yo you you could lift weights or whatever you have to finish it from the beginning to end because you don't want resistance and stuff and boom and the same thing like other stuff like rickettsia rickettsia is like in the woody area if you're in the woody area you're gonna monitor for likes like ticks and stuff like that cook your food because you don't want to get protosa or whatever so we talked about the reservoir so far reservoir is a person thinks the thing we talked about the agent the agent is all these things that could mess up a whole bunch of things in your thing like you know like virus and bacteria rickettsia Potosa, Hellman's, Bronze, Fungi. Oh, Fungi. I didn't really go over Fungi. Just know that fungus and stuff. Fungi, it's like people who have autoimmune and stuff like that. Like, it's... Well, I did talk about it. It's like normal flora and stuff. But when they're given a uh, medication, they have to finish for, They have to take it from the beginning to the end. You need to educate them. Yo, even if you're taking this, you feel a little bit better. You need to take it all the way through. Even if it's a pain in the butt. Because, like, you don't want resistance. Like, MRSA. So, we talked about that. Now, we're going to talk about transmission. Transmission, it's like... There's three different types there's contact there's droplets and there's airborne contact just know that when it comes down to contact it could be direct or indirect direct or indirect it could be like a, a sneeze like i sneeze it lands on you. or i have c diff like my booty didn't wash it gave you a hand wash you didn't wash your hands and you ate it but boom that's all direct so from that there's also indirect indirect as in like spores and stuff because bacteria they form like a protective barrier when they're on hibernation mode just think of like little ninja just like hiding out and stuff so they have spores c diff is a common thing that's one thing that's why usually you clean up the whole room with bleach spores so basically the poor hand washing touch this you eat it fecal oral and boom you have a whole bunch of messed up thing but also droplets droplets is like when a person sneezes and don't want to
gonna cover them up because they think that they're too good or whatever. Boom. Within three feet, you are at risk for getting droplet infection. So you're gonna educate them, be like, yo, when you feel like sneezing, make sure you use the tissue. Aside from that, when you use the tissue, wash your hands though. I mean, and like, if you don't have a tissue, you really need to go badly, do it on the all up in the, you know, your elbows or whatever because you're not touching nothing else like that. You don't do the hair, you don't do that. You do it on the elbow because nothing's touching it. Just look up that. So like, when you sneeze, just be like, like if you're educating like a teenager, be like, yo, I need to sneeze. Well, just basically dab on your elbow. Just do a dab. Do the actual, oh, dab out all that bacteria into your elbow because nothing else is going to touch on me. Now for airborne, airborne is a little bit more tricky because like TB, varicella and stuff like that, it lingers in the air. When it comes down to airborne, you have to get an N95. It's a specially fitted mask. That's like, boom. Our recap. Let's do a quick recap again. First of all, as a person plays a thing, infectious agent, it could be a virus, bacteria, rickettsia, protoza, crons, fungi, and helaments. That, that's seven things. Aside from that too, like we talked about motor transmission motor transmission is basically you know things that comes out how it moves around or whatever um which is like contact which is indirect or direct droplet which is like person sneezing within three feet and it could touch you whatever even if they say three feet my g like just be like yo fall back because three feet like say if i sneeze and i have a really strong sneeze it's not gonna fall in three feet it's gonna hit you like especially if i don't cover my mouth know that when it comes down to airborne airborne stuff you need to get an n95 that is a major key N95 is key. You need to have an N95. Patients actually trans like moving around or whatever. Just know that they can't walk around with an N95. That's a form of HIPAA. They're gonna walk around with a surgical mask. Now we're gonna move into port of entry. Port of entry is basically how the bacteria gets all up in you. When it comes down to port of entry, just know that you know it, your number one protection in your whole body is basically your intact skin. That is your number one protective barrier. Your intact skin. You have intact skin, you're good to go. The moment when you don't have an intact skin, you're you're in trouble you have a burn you're in trouble you have a trach you're in trouble because there's an opening there or whatever so when it comes down to intact skin port of entry mucous membrane mucous membrane stuff you can actually get sick like let's say if you have your eyes your eyes over there and stuff person who have conjectivitis touch your face person who has conjectivitis don't wash your hands give you a dab be like what are my g and the next you know, you're like holy crap my contacts is acting up congratulations by tomorrow you will have really crusty and itchy irritated eyes bam that's port of entry you just wiped it out or let's say a person who sneezes person sneezes don't want to cover it and you come out and you go no it's so good like that's how you get sick and stuff just tell people like yo cover your mouth bro it's you are never too cool to tell the person to cover your mouth be like yo son cover your mouth that you never even sneeze dab it out and aside from that too just know intact skin is number one thing it is your number one protection but to prevent the transmission is always hand washing hand washing is key it is emphasized you go to a hospital it's always hand wash don't forget to hand wash when you go to the bathroom like say in a restaurant the first thing you'll see on the mirror most of the time is employees most hand wash everyone should hand wash but you see there right there now we're gonna move into the host susceptible host susceptible host basically you need to be really young really old you're sick malnourished and and you have a really bad like immune system that's basically a host like they're like prone to get an infection when you're young you're prone to infection because of the fact that immune systems not build up old because your immune system is really falling apart sick because you're already sick and you're at risk for like getting more sick or whatever malnourished you don't have the vitamins to actually fight off the thing autoimmune because you don't have an immune system and stuff like cancer patients remember that because cancer patients what they'll do is they'll get like they're at risk they're super high risk for infection for that and the very last part is Porter exit. Porter exit is basically how the thing leaves. And the way the thing leaves is like track system. Your skin. If you have a wound, person touch it. Don't wash the hand. Boom. It just left your whole body. Congratulations. You see this is outside the party. Like, let's say a person goes to the bathroom. Don't wash their hands. Boom. Congratulations. You just infected your friend. So that's one thing. That's why hand washing is key. I'm, I'm saying like facts. Hand washing is important. Now since I'm talking about hand washing, hand washing this, hand washing that. Hand washing. Hand washing is key. Now when it comes down to the NCLEX, they're not gonna ask you, be like, yo, what temperature should there be? Blah, blah, blah. They're gonna ask you what is the most important thing when it comes down to hand washing. Your initial reaction will be like, uh, really hot. It should be really hot. Be like, no, it should, it, no. It is friction, my friend. Friction is number one key. When it comes down to hand washing, friction is king. That's facts. Friction, friction, hand washing. Friction, hand washing. 
so you're gonna tell Ross this and that and another area that you need to tell them is like under the nails it goes into more details with the whole hand washing thing like you know how you wear this this and that that's where you have your fundamentals book because this is an NCLEX review I'm not gonna go into super details with that just know the basics of like when it comes down to your hands you know like don't wear a ring no matter like how flashy it's like yo my like my booth and bet like a hundred thousand dollars on my ring don't wear that it hosts infection like a little diamond class or whatever can you imagine you're doing am care or whatever or you're forced to do wound care on a patient on like the, the sacrum area and the person starts pooping you have to clean it up and like you have your gloves and your gloves with the diamond starts poking up and you get poop on your ring bro bro so that's one thing and washing is key nails long no bueno take it out by the time when you're washing this you're ready to be a clinical you already know how the rule is when it comes down to nails don't have nail polish nail polish can't do dirt under your finger and you're at risk for infection Let's talk about abscesses 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 or whatever all right there's basically two different types there's medical and there's sterile medical aka clean technique it's basically like you know gloving hand washing stuff like that basic stuff it, it's reducing the microorganism that's what it is sterile on the other hand kills off all microorganisms so basically your hands you can't you you cannot sterilize this you cannot you can hand wash it this and that but you still have normal flora when it comes down to other stuff like let's like say gloves there's two different type of gloves there's one glove which is like a box all over the place that you could pick up or whatever and there's the little packaging ish where it's like sealed up there's no bacteria all up in there it's straight up like sealed so when it comes down to sterile just know that there's two ways of doing it there's one chemical and steam when it comes down to steam just know that steam is basically like a autocrave chemical they have chemicals and stuff like that when it comes to medical medical is hand washing disinfecting whatever on the surface but there's still bacteria there it's not 100 cleaned out versus sterile sterile has zero key thing when it comes down to clean technique hand wash hand washes before and after you glove before you glove you hand Wash. after you go up you hand wash and before you leave the room you hand wash that's key that is one key common sense ish do not share your glove you have your glove in one room do not take it to the other room and other stuff like i got i don't want to go into detail with fundamental stuff just just no common sense like you know have stuff go wipe that ish up wipe things up make sure everything is all nice and clean or whatever you know that sharp be in a sharp container bio bloody stuff biohazard stuff now when it comes down to precaution there's two different types of precaution there's standard and transmission based. standard is basically like yo everyone is infected with something and put it in your state of mind be like yo everyone in here got AIDS that's fact though don't don't touch me wash your hands though or before I touch a person I need to wash my hands though fact because you never know so hand washing gloving standard precaution type of ish standard precaution you treat everyone like they're they have something hand washing is key gloving is key and stuff like that when it comes down to transmission transmission is a little bit different kind of covered it a little bit just no contact precaution is basically like gloving, hand washing, gown, mask, goggles, and stuff. When it comes down to airborne, just no airborne. It's like, you know, N95. Make sure it's N95. Transmission stuff. There's droplets, whatever. When it comes down to transporting the patient, you try to limit it as much as you can. But if you have to transmit them, surgical mask. Surgical mask is key. Even a person who has like N95, who like, who has that one, they have to have a surgical mask. So let's talk about transmission based passion. Transmission based precaution just remember like the transmission three different types there is droplet contact and there's airborne airborne basically they're gonna have a negative pressure room because you don't want that issue lingering all over the place so basically it's pushing out things just it's called isolation i'm not to isolation there are isolation they have a negative pressure room so all the air is being filtered out it's not lingering inside the building it's being filtered out whatever if you're going inside a room who has a person who has an um who has an airborne you're gonna have an n95 which is special for the field. If the patient needs to be transmitted, just know that they're gonna have a surgical mask. Now, when it comes to contact, just just no contact. It's like, like let's say, see the isolation. Afterward, you need to bleach out the room or whatever. You need to call maintenance. Be like, yo, person has see the he's good now, but you're gonna have to clean up his room though with bleach or whatever because you don't want that issue to linger around because bacteria from spores. And C diff actually has one of the strongest spores yet. Like it explodes. So that's no bueno. Contact ish. 
a, a precaution with that one like say a person who has uti that's a form of contact because it's fluid or whatever uti common with catheters catheter and that one catheter that are risk for uti infection it has to be sealed up cleaned up it should be below i'm not going to go into detail with the uti part because that's going to be covered with the urinary part as for the wounds just know that wounds you have to monitor smell how it looks or whatever yeah and that's basically infection control bro like i don't want to go deep inside it at this point you should already know the basics of that but those are basically like the biggies the biggie biggies well gloving there's like you know clean technique gloving when you're taking it out take one out then after when you take it you put it in the thing you take one out take it finger pull out and boom um sterile sterile is a little bit more different because basically it's folded there's a cup pick it up slide it in slide it in this is clean take that one and you hold it from under the cuff and you slide it through and boom then when you're removing it it's the same concept you're doing a medical ish boom pitch out have it in the ball take this boom toss it out when you're putting on is from clean to dirty so you from the cleanest to the dirtiest that's what you're putting on when it comes down to removing it's from the dirtiest to the cleanest and the most dirtiest one would be a glove because you're touching the patient so all that is it's fundamental so now i will edit this and work on typing the notes for ethic which should be pretty short um so that's yeah so that's basically infection controls so i'm gonna wrap it up thank you for watching please like share comment and subscribe and most importantly importantly be happy and peace